I have to say, one of the conversations that everybody uh, is having, one of the most important topics uh, here on the streets of this country, of course, is uh, what's going on in relation to the, uh, I would say, increasing conflict now uh, with Israel and Hamas. So Ella Braverman, she uh, has been speaking out today. Let's just have a little listen to what she had to say. We've seen now tens of thousands of people take to the streets following the massacre of Jewish people, the single largest loss of Jewish life since the Holocaust, chanting for the erasure of Israel from the map. To my mind, there's only one way to describe those marches. They are hate marches. Well, I can tell you right now that that description has really divided opinion. What do you make to that description? Accurate or inflammatory? Your thoughts on that? Uh, but when it comes to actually um, policing extremism, there's been a lot of focus and conversation about whether or not we've got the balance right. Where do you stand on it? Well, I, I completely endorse everything Suella Braverman just said, and it's so refreshing to have a member of Cabinet calling these things out unequivocally. She made a brilliant speech on how multiculturalism in this country was failing in Washington a few weeks ago, and I'm delighted to see her following up absolutely unequivocally at the moment on this issue. There can be no way to describe what we've seen on the streets of London other than an incitement to obliterate Israel. And that is a hate crime. And I disagree with the Metropolitan Police that it's not clear when they said jihad what they meant. They said emphatically calling for an intifada between London and Gaza to wipe Israel off the map. There was a leader of a group who, whose name I couldn't pronounce actually till Scarlett gave me a tip on how to say it. But it, the English version, the, the way to remember it is to, to say his butzeria. And um, if you say that fast enough, it has a slightly comical meaning. But anyway, this chap who heads up his Hizbatsaria, which is an organization that is banned in very many Muslim countries, but somehow tolerated in the United Kingdom, was asking people to decide which side of the battle they were on, because one side was going to victor be victorious and people would be held to account. This is happening on the streets of London. This is illegal. There's no new law required. It's illegal under the Racial and Religious Act 2006 and a whole load of other acts uh, as well. And, you know, we've seen this, haven't we, Michelle? When it suits the Metropolitan Police to make arrests, for example, uh, people protesting against lockdowns, people, Lawrence Fox, uh, advocating that uh, uh, those cameras, U.S. cameras should be taken down. They act in force. If you, if you have a, there was that wonderful lady who was praying in silence outside an abortion clinic and she was arrested. And yet you've got over 100,000 people on the streets of London advocating the obliteration of a nation which is an ally of the United Kingdom and no action is taken. And I find that absolutely offensive. Suella is spot on. No, I, I mean, can we get some facts into this? Right. Most of those people who were, who were on the, the, the march were not calling for the obliteration of Israel. I think it's really, really important to say that. Most of the people who are pro-Palestine, who actually believe in a two-state solution, right, that is that there is a Palestinian and an, Isra in, and an Israeli state. It is unfortunate that at the moment the people running Israel in particular Netanyahu, do not believe in a two-state solution, right, and are doing their best. I mean, Netanyahu actually encouraged Hamas because it would split the Palestinians. So, so let's have that. Most of those people... You said let's deal in facts, Scarlett. Where's your evidence to suggest Netanyahu was, a, was promoting Hamas? Which, by the way does not believe in a two-state system either. No, its no, no, stated wait. policy is from the river no, to the sea. Just a minute. I'm not... I, what I'm saying is... is a, uh, I could find you the quote. I mean, he, he's made no secret of it, is that the thing about Hamas, Hamas is a terrorist organisation. There is absolutely no question about that. What happened to that massacre was unforgivable and inexcusable. I'm not saying anything about Hamas. What I'm saying is that Netanyahu, which is why there is such, such divisions in Israel, is that Netanyahu has made no secret, right, that he thinks encouraging Hamas splits the Palestinians because, because, of, because of Fatah. But can I say, it's really, really important that we get this right. Most of those people on that march 
I mean, I would have said 99% do not support Hamas. Most of those people on that march support a two-state solution and they are worried about the Palestinians. And being worried about the Palestinians does not make you anti-Israel. Absolutely. But if you're calling for jihad, if you're calling for an intifada between London and Gaza, if you're calling for the wiping out of the state of Israel, you need to be arrested. The, 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 the head of this, his Hizbatsaria, is going around completely unabashed disclosing his cards completely and not being taken to task at all by law enforcement. Yet a woman praying in silence in her head outside an abortion clinic can be arrested. And, how many and that, people... tells you, that tells you how politicised the police have yeah, I know, I know. And that's what the people who, 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 who are anti-monarchy found out on the day of the coronation. How many people were arrested? 70 were arrested, OK? No charges made. I mean, yes, the police, the police decide every day what they want to do. But it isn't always, it, it isn't always uh, on my side or your side. I mean, they, they can be be all over the place. And the reason the woman was arrested was because there's a buffer zone for abortions, right? Is that actually outside abortion clinics, you are not allowed to go too close because it really, really upsets the women going in there but to she do a perfectly she legal thing. She was standing thing. there silently, Scott. It doesn't matter. Well, it doesn't matter. Well, but she was standing there trying to, um, you know, respond to the people having the abortion, which is... Yeah. Not, not really permitted in that zone. But let's get back on the topic. You say, Scarlett, that majority of those people on those marches are peaceful, law-abiding, they want a two-state solution, fine. For the minority of people that are not peaceful, that don't want a two-state solution, that absolutely do want to see Jewish people obliterated, I mean, there's... It's in Russia, so I don't want to try and frighten people by suggesting that anything similar is happening here because it's not. But when you see those scenes of that airport... Um, it was disgraceful. I don't even know if I've got some of that footage. It, it was absolutely disgraceful what happened in that airport. I mean, trying to find out whether somebody is Jewish... I mean, whether somebody is Israeli is bad enough. And, and we've had this in the old days of, of... I mean, look at this, guys. This is what I'm showing you on uh, the screen. I just want to yeah. reference what we're seeing here. This is people who are... I mean, I, I want to call them people, but at the same time, they're acting in an animalistic way in my mind, and people are saying, oh, Michelle, don't insult animals. Well, they're barbaric, these, Yeah, they? that's the best word. But they, yeah, they are barbaric. I dread to think what they would have done if they'd have found someone that met their definition of being the wrong person, whether that's an Israeli or whether that's a Jewish person, because I can bet my bottom dollar they would have not got hold of that person and said, hi there, can we have a rational debate about what is going on? They, to me, look like people that were intending to harm. So my question is to you, Scarlett, yes, fair enough, the majority of people on the marches are in this country, peaceful, nothing uh, wrong and all the rest of it great. But the minority of people that are not in that camp, that are wanting to cause harm to British citizens, uh, whether that's Jewish or beyond. Do you think the approach to those people is strong enough? Now, I, I mean, the reason I can't stand those people is because of what they do to the marches, right? Is, is you have... I, I mean, that's not a question. No, I'm no, asking no. Like okay, no. I'm asking whether or not the police response is... No, I, th I, th I think the police should be saying we don't have hate crime on... on but I think they have oh, to do it on them. every march. Tell them. Someone trying to whip up people to go around beheading people, standing there and saying we don't have hate no, crime. No, no, that's you, not you, going to fix no, it, you, yeah, what you, No, the, what you say is you, you're not allowed to say that. You're not allowed to shout those things. And you say that whether... It's well, they are the, shouting those things. I know. And, and, but, but I wish the so police... The question is, are the police responding properly to those people that are intent on trying to whip up people, I would argue, to commit acts of terrorism on innocent people in this country? Yeah, I, I, I would be happy to see those people taken out... Right, I mean, not... not <laughs> what do you mean by taking Sorry, out? taken out <laughs> of the march. She's right. not messing around. Taken yeah. out of the march. But I think... But I, what I'm saying is, it's not only on those marches that you but get why it. Why do you answer my question? My question I'm saying is, yes. I'm saying yeah. yes. But I'm, let me just give you I an mean, example. How many times I do I have to say yes? that the police are not acting appropriately uh, to the people that are causing... OK, but or, I, what, what I'm saying is, I, what, I, I'm not there. I'm not there when it happens, right? I haven't seen it. Oh, is, come on, is, that this fellow, look, Scarlett, this me, fellow wandering I... around chanting jihad, he's not calling for whatever it was and that I heard struggle. it described as the no. other day. And in a no. struggle, he stood in front of a, he stood in front of a banner talking about uh, Muslim armies chanting jihad, and then you get this kind of linguistic uh, expert analysing, going, yeah, I think he's 
just talking about the inner struggle. I mean, come yeah. on. Yeah, and, and, and not just calling for jihad, but demanding that people choose which side they're on. Mm. I mean, it is absolutely divisive. But there's one really important example to give you. Sadiq Khan, who's been calling for a ceasefire against party policy, Labour Party policy, against British national policy, which is to cause for pauses, humanitarian pauses. Sadiq Khan is a friend with a guy called Mohammed Kozbar, who you may or may not have heard of. He is the senior most or one of the top people in the Muslim Council for Britain, an organization which the government refuses to do business with. He sits on the Crown Prosecution, uh, Crown Prosec Prosecution Service, uh, Crown Prosecution Service for the, on the panel of hate crimes. This is a man who has praised the founder of Hamas. And he sits on the Crown Prosecution Service's panel to uh, deliberate on hate crime. And there you have Sadiq Khan, who has a very large influence on the Metropolitan Police, calling for a ceasefire against policy, against Labour Party so policy. So, are you, just a minute, we, we keep talking about Sadiq, and this is yeah. because... Because I'm because joining the dots between Cosbar, no. who's on the CPS, uh, for, on the committee for the uh, CPS uh, scrutiny no, of no, hate let, crime, let, please, and, let's not. and Sadiq Khan, who's calling for ceasefires, which is basically undermining Israel's ability to take Hamas to no. task. But, and this is what we're seeing on the streets ben, of London. Ben, the reason Sadiq, or Sadiq, as you quite rightly call him, I'm sorry, I always call him Sadiq. The reason he is calling for a ceasefire is because, I mean, A, uh, the, the aims of Israel, I mean, anybody is now saying this is never going to be met. At the moment, they are, there, are, there is a child being killed every 15 minutes. There is, no, there is so little humanitarian aid getting in that people are starving. What he is saying, so yes, it's no, against no. Labour Party policy, but, the, but Everyone, Sadiq is doing it for humanitarian ev reasons. No, every Everyone is calling for humanitarian pauses. Ben, I, I happen to know Sadiq. I happen to be speaking Everyone to him. Everyone is calling. Well, I was speaking to him about well, it yesterday. She's been talking I was speaking to him, to him about yeah. it yesterday, yeah. right? We were talking about the Palestinian thing. He, he, he does not understand why his butteria was, was not outlawed under Blair. Right. Don't say Sadiq that Khan, this man is a, an extremist. Sadiq, Sadiq, Khan, Sadiq, Sadiq been... Khan put up a poster the other day. His office put up a poster of four white people on, on, on his website saying that these people, white people, do not represent London. This man has a direct influence over the Met Police. He's good mates with a guy called Mohammed Kozbar, who, is pri who has praised in the past the founder of Hamas. Hamas is an organization which wants to wipe out Israel. We don't need to do a lot of joining of the dots to get to the conclusion. This isn't and, true. And, well, it this, is true. This, no, and there's a big difference ben. between calling for a ceasefire and calling for humanitarian pauses, which is an agreed policy at UN. No problem with humanitarian pauses. I've got a real issue with Sadiq Khan and other leading politicians calling for a ceasefire, which is basically asking Israel to give up its right to pursue Hamas. No, it's not. It's actually asking Israel to stop killing. No, that's a humanitarian pause. No, please tell me, stop telling me what I know. The reason, I mean, A, you know, we, you can look at Sadiq one way. I can that when I first met Sadiq many years ago, he was working with Jews and with Christians. He's always worked across the faiths, right? There is absolutely no question that, that that's what he's done. That, 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 and that's why, the, you know, the, the weekend that he was elected, he went to a synagogue and he, and he had a, he had a, 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 a service in a, in a cathedral, right? Because he is, he, he is cross He really, really believes in that. And the reason he's causing for a ceasefire is not about, you know, I don't know what Israel is, is going to, to achieve with Hamas, right? And actually, all the military people don't either. But what we do know is that, is that, is that innocent Palestinians in Gaza are being killed all the time. Well, do you know what is certainly a very emotional uh, topic? You know, what is the answer? Because nobody, of course, wants innocent people to die. Whatever side uh, of the fence you're on, surely uh, that all uh, seems wrong, doesn't it? And, of course, Sadiq Khan is not here uh, to respond to some of those allegations. I suspect that he uh, might dispute some of what has been said tonight.